Since 1960, there has been 120 coup d'etats in Africa. There have only been seven in the Caribbean. The African's Disease Taken from Professor Chancellor Williams' book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, pages 151 to 152. Example 1. In the latter part of the 13th century, David, king of Mercuria, seeing no other way to stop Arab occupation of his country, stepped up his raids in Upper Egypt. The raids were easier to carry out because of the chaos that followed the triumphs of the Mameluk Muslims in Egypt. But in 1272 the blacks, in what I have attacked as the pattern of their own self-destruction, made the major step towards that end. The usual impatience of heirs to the throne found full expression in Shikandu, the king's nephew. He hastened to the Muslim sultan of Egypt to secure an alliance and plan an invasion of his country that would assure his ascendancy to the throne. The Muslim sultan had every reason to grasp this wonderful opportunity handed to him by the blacks themselves. Not only would he be able to even scores with the blacks, but he would also be able to create conditions for Mameluk Muslim hegemony over their land. Moreover, the African king had not only been raiding Egypt with impunity, but he had denounced the Treaty of 652 AD and refused to pay the Bact, which was an agreement to provide the Muslims colonizers with 600 slaves per year. Sultan Baibars, therefore, did not hesitate. He organized a strong invading expedition with Shikandu at its head and entered the black country. The war was long and bitter, the Sultan's strategy in using his black army, along with, Shikandu's own soldiers, made it appear to be civil war between blacks. In the end the sultan won through the impatient black heir to the throne, and allowed him to be crowned king as his protégé. Once again, learning nothing from even just yesterday, the black leadership paved the way for further Arab advances into their country. The black leadership struggle for personal power and, above all, their own personal security and welfare, precluded their concern for the welfare and future of their people. They were quite willing and ready to welcome Arabs and to surrender their people to them in exchange for high office and limited consideration. The days of the black immortals seemed to have passed. Mental pygmies again occupied the throne once held by men's, Pianchi, Shabaka, and Calidosos. So that was an example of the African disease in ancient history. The disease which saw envious Africans joining forces with enemies of their nation so they can become the illegitimate leader, even if it means they weaken their nation and then lose it in the process. Professor Chancellor Williams' book is littered with historical examples of this disease, which he says is rife in Africa, is a major reason for the downfall of Africa, and in our opinion, this disease is still prevalent among Africa and Africans to this very day. To find modern-day examples of the African disease where illegitimate people overthrew legitimate leaders like Shikandu did, we looked at coup d'etats in the world since 1960. What we found was There have been over 120 coup d'etats in Africa over this time frame, 87 in Asia, there were 46 in Latin America, 28 in Europe, only 7 in the Caribbean and just 5 coups in the Australias. Why does Africa, by far, have the highest number of coup d'etats since 1960. Is it because of the African disease? Did the African disease play a part in what happened at the London radio station? Choice FM The Caribbean community of the UK was given licenses to run legal radio stations because of the treatment they had been receiving from the racist police throughout the 1980s. In one such case the police raided the home of a Caribbean family while they slept and shot and crippled the mother. This atrocity led to the 1985 Brixton riots. It was in the aftermath of all the race riots throughout the 1980s that UK officials and leaders of the Caribbean community held talks, and as a result of these talks the Caribbean community was given the Choice FM radio license. Choice FM went live in 1990 with the vast majority of its presenters being Caribbean. In 2013 Choice FM was taken over by Capital Radio. The new management sacked all but one of the Caribbean presenters and replaced them with Ghanaians. Was this a coup d'etat? Was this the African disease at play here? 
So there's three examples of what we are calling the African disease spanning over 900 years. 1. Shikandu, overthrowing his uncle in 1272 to the detriment of his African nation, Mercuria. 2. The immense number of coup d'etats in Africa since 1960 to the detriment of all those nations. And 3. The wholesale replacing of Caribbean presenters with Ghanaian presenters at Choice FM in 2013. Professor Chancellor Williams said the African disease was instrumental in the destruction of Africa. And if we don't acknowledge it. And then address it. It will continue to destroy Africa and African communities worldwide. And in no way do we think all Africans are infected with this African disease, not even remotely. It's a small but very influential minority that are infected. This is Black Think Tank. Tell us what you think.